Okay, this is Robert of Mayflower Bookshop in Berkeley, Michigan, USA. You can find me at mayflowerbookshop.com on the web and a YouTube station with music and talks. So I want to talk today about the full moon in August, August 22nd full moon. A lot of people are talking about it. It's kind of cool because Jupiter is conjoined up with the moon. Jupiter and the moon are together so that when when the evening comes of the 22nd, you'll see Jupiter come up first in the east and then the full moon will rise as the sun sets. Should be really beautiful. Um, might be difficult to see Jupiter for some people. But nonetheless, you know, you couple that along with the fact that Mars is trining Uranus. Mars Mars in Virgo trining Uranus in Taurus. So here's here's the full moon in Aquarius with Jupiter. So it's a super fun, social, magical, you know, it's it's for enlarging your family, enlarging your friends, expanding family, friends, money, home life, travel, communications of a higher level, you know, spiritual studies, finding great books at the Mayflower. <laughs> It's like a really fun one. It's a it's a really fun one. We don't have enough fun these days. And you kind of have to think about the fact that it's in Aquarius. So the moon Jupiter in Aquarius favors group activity versus the sun and Leo's individuals. Now, hopefully individuals and groups, a group mentality and individuals can get along. But this favors uh, expanding yourself, your your consciousness with other people and uh, socially, and community, sacred community-wise. And also, wonderfully, there's a Mars trying Uranus. And, you know, we're going to be feeling it all this week before the full moon on the 22nd. And then you'll feel the Mars trying Uranus, which is very earthy genius, practicality, ingenuity, fixing things up, making plans that are rock-solid, how to improve your work life and, you know, how to find work that doesn't hurt your soul. How to find friends and work and community that expand your mind and your your ability to move in the world. And um, it should be some kind of breakthroughs with computers and technology, of, in better communications, you know. Venus trying Saturn on the 23rd, the Monday after the full moon, the full moon taking place in the morning of Sunday. So full moon night is kind of like on the 20th, 21st, probably 19th too, because on the 19th of August, Uranus goes retrograde. And that is a huge thing too, because everybody who's like Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius have been you know, the last three and a half years and, and or the next three and a half years are going through major struggle between security and freedom. And how do you hold things together while you're growing things? How do you hold a garden while you're growing things? How do you hold a friend while you're growing things? And Uranus wants to grow too fast and do too much too fast. And Saturn goes too slow. And so a lot of us are caught between people that are moving too fast and people who are moving too slow. You could, you could say that. Or opportunities for money. And this very slow... <clears throat> unsurety about what is money and is the cryptocurrency going to take over and why they call it a cryptocurrency if it's so safe and honest. Anyway, you know, speaking of conspiracy theories, it's H.P. Blavatsky in Isis Unveiled Secret Doctrine who said that the ultimate conspiracy theory is that the heart, the heart of wisdom and compassion has not fully flowered yet with intelligence. So, and the, the thinking hasn't evolved with and flowered with loving kindness and a sense of the eternal return, reincarnation and karma, having to understand one's soul life in, in at least three or more lifetime progress rather than everything squeeze boxed into this weekend, this year, this life. It puts a lot of pressure when you get rid of reincarnation and karma, which took you know, the last 2,000 years of getting rid of it, more or less, but it never got rid of it, never went away. And uh, Blavatsky and Steiner both say that if we understood reincarnation and karma, 
the world would find peace and happiness overnight. So we're talking about the full moon, and we have this wonderful a series of wonderful aspects, like Venus trining Pluto earlier in the month of August, and Venus um, trining Saturn for long-term security, in-depth relationship. Um, you have like the Venus trine Saturn actually on the 23rd is you come out of the full moon with a sense of wanting to manifest and incarnate long-term security. And, and Mars is even trining Neptune even though it's off a bit. Now here, that's the fun part. Now the difficult part is that Neptune is opposing the ascending sign on the full moon chart for Washington, D.C. Transit of Neptune has been opposing the Neptune midheaven of the United States and will continue to do that for a couple of years under that influence of Neptune square Mars, which I'll talk about in a minute. Neptune opposing Neptune, Neptune at the bottom of the United States chart. So, if, you know, this whole idea of, of Neptune squaring Mars and Neptune opposing Neptune, flooding versus fires, melting poles that could refreeze for all we know quickly at some point. But right now, um, it's getting kind of crazy what's going on with the North Pole and the, the, the magnetic shift, the, the magnetic pole is shifting and the 12,000-year cycle and the half cycle of that and half cycle of that. We're kind of like at this huge turning point where our catastrophe psychology and catastrophe um, physiology, cat catastrophe revelations and fear and weirdness is rampant. When, when we don't have a sense of our deep, deep stillness, like the voice of the silence to lead us and the silence itself to ground us within each heart and soul and spirit, if we don't have that, then we're, many of us are spun out. And when you see the Neptune squaring Mars in the United States chart, September, October, and with Neptune opposing Neptune, then Neptune opposing the midheaven. Neptune's going retrograde to do this too, by the way, until December 21st, about where Neptune at 20 degrees Pisces goes direct. And then it will square the Mars and Neptune again, but it would be a lot easier than it is right now. So the Neptune, when you have like... Um, Neptune squaring the Mars, and you have like this full moon with Neptune opposing the ascending sign. Neptune squaring the Mars in the United States chart. I'm, a, I'm looking at two different charts, but I'm putting it together for you. And you have the Pluto return. When you're looking at all that Neptune, you're looking at a, kind of an attack on the etheric body of the plant world of, and the honeybees and the healthy rhythms of the human body. And this whole... This whole um, <clears throat> health problem of the virus, and there's different names for it, of course, and then the jab necessary. There's a lot of confusion going on, and Neptune is often confusing facts when it comes to the medical, confusing facts when it comes to insurance. It can be inflation and deflation at a quick rate, especially with Saturn square Uranus, but the Neptune adds a lot of confusion. Um, when you have, with the Sagittarius rising chart that I mostly use, although I, I get that there's other people using some a couple of the other better astrologers in America that I see as peers in a different way, and um, they they use uh, Scorpio rising one, and another one uses a good friend of mine actually, Ray Merriman um, uses a different ascending sign too, and they both get results, so. I'm not. A, I, you have to like pick a chart that works for you most of the time because is the chart what's accurate or are you the good astrologer that's accurate? And it, it, it t takes turns, you know, in a way. But when we use the Sagittarius rising, one of the interesting things that's happening right now is that Jupiter conjuncted the moon and, and, and the moon is home and what make, creates a home and the wood and all the materials for building a home and what our day-to-day -day rhythms. And when Jupiter hit it, we started to go on a big bang into the summer, but then Jupiter went retrograde, and it's going to hit it again. And so even though the virus thing, all that stuff started to come back, 
Jupiter is going to conjunct it again and <clears throat> coming up here. And that is an exciting uh, thing because we, we're kind of struggling between incredibly good aspects and incredibly crazy ones. <laughs> so you don't need to know that, but you already know it. So when we talk about, let's talk about this a little more. When we talk about Virgo and Pisces and Gemini and Sag, that's where the Neptune aspects are hitting. And this is giving a lot of confusion. Like next year, Jupiter will go into Pisces and it will bless the mutable signs that are the mutable signs are mutable because they change their mind a lot and they feel too much and then they think too much and then they feel too much or they think too much or they're feeling the other person's thinking or vice versa. And when you have Neptune making this difficult aspect in the United States chart, you could say that unless you're an artist and playing music and have a garden, you're probably going crazy if you're a Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, or Sag. And you have these big plans of going far away and you overshoot yourself so that you can't do it. And then you end up stuck where you are and then you get depressed or you get overinflated and excited. So that is very quickly. I mean, you really have to do your own chart and look at every planet and where the planets are now and where the progressions are to have an accurate read on your present and the future. But just generally speaking, a lot of people like this because it can make sense to you. And and you have this idea of the air signs with Jupiter going back into Aquarius. And so, <clears throat> especially if you are Aquarius, if you're Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, and Scorpio, you're being affected by either spending too much or not having enough stuff or things or money. And uh, when you think of Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, the air signs, especially if you're born in the latter part of that, the last third of it, Jupiter is going back into Aquarius. And so Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, especially the latter degrees, are kind of benefiting uh, from this. And you can see that sometimes people have planets where there's good and bad aspects taking place, you know. So you might have seen that just there. And you have... This full moon is a magical, magical time that that has already maybe started for a lot of people. And it goes into, um, it goes for like at least till the next new moon. And um, I can only quote the Knight of the Golden Stone, CRC. Art is the servant of nature. Nature is the daughter of time. I read that in The Secret Doctrine by... Blavatsky, she talks a lot about the Rosicrucians and Isis and Veiled and Secret Doctrine and uh, and even Archangel Michael. So, but Rudolf Steiner, of course, is the, um, uh, he's the guy that carried on Blavatsky's esoteric character of the Gospels. At the end of Blavatsky's life, she was writing about the Christos and how the Christos, this is pre-Christian Christos, Christos, Christos of the Greeks, you know, the spirit of the sun that sparks our heart to have a mindfulness, dharma. Something that leads us to freedom of thinking and freedom of truth and love, universal mind kind of. The noose of Plato, the Hermes of the Hermetic. So I wanted to say something about this full moon more. I want to say something more. There's Virgo rising, so you have to be careful. If you want to have fun this full moon, be careful of being overcritical. Mercury opposes Neptune, and people, I think that a lot of us feel that other people are lying or misleading us. And um, often this is projected onto China. China's very Neptunian in a way. But it can be our world leaders and medicine and havoc with um, people who are less fortunate. And of course, in the esoteric character of the Gospels, at the end of it, Blavatsky dies and doesn't finish the other two or three parts she wanted to do. And Steiner takes over and really gets into this Christology and masters of wisdom and harmony of feelings that Blavatsky was really into. So I think that Steiner's a continuation of theosophy, a major, major proponent 
of Gertian natural science that is a different way of thinking than modern materialistic science that atomizes and separates all life and plants and human beings from the rhythms of the stars and the rhythms of the seasons and the terribly important factor of the elements of fire, earth, air, and water, nature. Nature is very important. It's our, it's our externalized body, and uh, we're having a lot of problems with Mother Nature, and we don't see how we're contributing to it materialistically, how we're toxifying and poisoning everything so that nature is going to react. But we also don't see how we're spiritually connected to nature on the etheric body and rhythms of breath. And we're, we're connected with our astral body of our, of our psychic imagination and our dream time, our shaman side, our intimate love of nature and nature's love for us. And, and that includes the, the breath of the seasons weaving the stars into the deep earth and the earth into the deep stars. And you can read all about this in The Cycle of the Year by Steiner and the Archangels, The Four Seasons in the Archangels by Rudolf Steiner, <clears throat> The Harmony of the Creative Word, Symphony of the Creative Word by Rudolf Steiner. You can read a lot about it in Isis and Veil by Blavatsky. And so when we come this full moon, <clears throat> a lot of people are really taking off with having a lot of fun. Mars trying to rain us for breakthrough experiences, incredible encounters with new people or, re or the redeeming of the past by new activities that are committed to uh, the beloved community and social life rather than, than antisocial forces. And there's a lot of aspects here that, that indicate a lot of positive events that might heal a lot of many people's mind and heart and body and soul even by the spiritual activities that are taking place. Now we have to remember that Saturn is squaring Uranus, Saturn in Aquarius, <clears throat> and Uranus in Taurus. And that's that struggle of the fixed signs to find security and freedom. And um, it's, it's related to um, money and job and home life and it, and it's complicated. It's, it'd be like long, long talk. Like Saturn, the Jupiter-Saturn we had last December conjunct in Aquarius. I mean, Jupiter's yes, Saturn's no. Jupiter's social, Saturn's antisocial. Blavatsky and Steiner kind of indicated that Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions are major social shifts that take place every 20 years. But they're also like in the past, the Jupiter-Saturn, <clears throat> the last Jupiter-Saturn conjunction was in, you know, 1405, I think. And um, that was the, the discovery of tarot cards. Even though they were there in the 1300s, it, it, they, they really came out into the public at 1405, 1400. And the triggering of the Renaissance, early triggerings, and it's, the, according to Rudolf Steiner, the age of the consciousness soul, that every human being starts to, participate and feel what's going on with the world. And that consciousness soul, when we can be true to the world and to our individuality simultaneously, which is kind of what this full moon in August 22nd is, Sun and Leo being true to your individual self and having good work ethic initiative. And the moon Jupiter is honoring <clears throat> the sacred community that includes animals and plants and birds and honeybees and flowers and star, everybody, everybody. A unified field theory, the unity in diversity, e pluribus unum, of the one dollar bill, that there's a oneness of the fatherhood of God or deity that permeates all forms. And one needs to experience this and see it. So there's a tendency um, in this full moon that, that, again, there's this struggle with the North Node. <clears throat> kind of at a midpoint, a T-square, the handle of the T-square is the north node of Gemini. So it's time to make new connections this month, well into next month and maybe all the way into uh, December. But this north node, uh, T-squaring the sun-moon, is really a strong indication of, of a need for communication with a higher self, a higher and lower self. The whole thing with initiation and theosophy and Steiner is the 
purification of the lower astral body and the lower manas, the mind, and to unite oneself in an open-hearted uh, thinking and feeling way, head-heart way. And you can hear about these meditations in other talks I gave on in my YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel. But But we're talking about this purification of the lower manas and uniting ourselves with the universal thinking, the news, the higher manas. The manas that identifies with universal love and truth, the Atma Buddha. The, lower, the manas identifies with the higher mind that's identified with the universal loving kindness, kind-heartedness, and seeing everyone as a friend. In the long run, we're all family and members of each other members of, of, a, of a mystical body of Christ, they would say in Christianity, but it's like the cosmic Buddha or the really the Hermes, <clears throat> the Adonai. Adonai, I mean, it's a three, like it's like Om. Okay, so I talk about Om, A-U-M, and O-M in other talks, so I won't do that now. So let's talk about um, the, the Jupiter trine Venus in 2022 is going to be really exciting. It happens in, you know, Pisces, trining the Jupiter in Cancer in the United States chart. You know, Jupiter trying Venus in the United States chart, babies, love, because the Neptune aspects are lower sperm counts and, and inflation, deflation, and infertility, and confusion with China and the oceans and outer space, and cocky guys that are running all around with Mars and Gemini in the United States chart. And um, when when Neptune goes direct in December of 21, 2021, maybe that will ease off a little bit, but we still have a couple more years when it's opposing the, the midheaven. So we have to p protect our waters and our etheric gardens. That's the Neptune thing. Otherwise, everything's getting poisoned. Um, I mean, just without going into this, the spiritual and the astral and the intellectual and the scientific, we all know that it's happening. Everybody knows it. Nobody knows what to do about it. And a lot of people are dysfunctional about it. I don't know what to do about it. So other than trying to wake up spiritually and meditate and pray and wash my own dishes and till my own garden, you know, help whatever friends you can to grow. I think that struggle between triggering people to grow too fast versus they're too slow and your people are numbing out. I mean, because the Neptune aspects, Neptune square Mars and Neptune to Bob in the United States chart and Neptune opposing Neptune in the United States chart and Neptune, I mean, that whole Neptune thing is the legalization of drugs and that this whole idea that, you know, um, they're making artificial opiates and so that we, we don't need them in Afghanistan anymore. You know, somebody, somebody said that the other day to me and I went, hmm, I don't know, you know, I mean, do you know? I don't know. I do know that there's too many drugs. And so it's really, you know, it really behooves us to spend a sacred day once a week, a sacred week once a month, a sacred month once a year, a sacred week once. We need to go on retreat and stop all medications and drugs and alcohol and weird food and extremes in food of yin and yang. Neptune's yin, too much yin in macrobiotics to expansive luciferic forces. The Saturn is aramonic, you know, people would call it satanic, I suppose. And Uranus is the genius of the mind, both in science and philosophy and truth. So that is a struggle too, but we don't have time to get into that. I wanted to like talk about this last Jupiter-Saturn conjunct because the Jupiter and Aquarius that we're experiencing now is a major, major thing. And uh, it happened December 21st, 2020, um, at the beginning of Aquarius. And, you know, it's going to last Jupiter, Saturn, every 20 years, stays in air signs for 140 or more years. And um, in 1802, it was mostly in, well, it was in earth signs before it hit this air sign thing until, I don't know, 2159 or something. It stays in air, somewhere in there. A lot of ast astronomer guys, they change. The planets are moving at different speeds and a lot of things kind of shift a little bit. So the jupiter Saturn is a social and antisocial forces. You can read about the social future and social and antisocial forces with Rudolf Steiner. Blavatsky has a lot to say about it too if you want to do some homework. 
I think it's interesting that um, we had we had um, you know thirty three years after Jacques de Molay was murdered, the the head master Grand Master of the Templars, where in thirteen 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 fourteen somewhere in there. 13, Jacques de Molay was murdered and then about 33 years later, the, the, the year, the, the very following year, he had predicted the Pope would die and that the, um, the king would die and they did. And then 33 years later, the plague takes place and then from 1346 to 1353 and then um you have another 33, 33, couple of 33 years. Steiner makes a big thing about these 33 years. And it, and it, it, you have the Black Plague, the, what they call the, the bubonic plague. They have different names for it. And this comes about like in this cycle of 33 years after de Molay and the ruinous activities of the murder of the Cathars and the Templars and people who love the earth, you know, and the crazy crusades and a very difficult uh, moment that was kind of almost like a shadow of Alexander the Great. But we don't have time to talk about that at this point, but I wanted to bring out that we're entering into this Jupiter-Saturn air sign thing, and this is a huge, um, it's a huge event that is going to bring us into inner space as well as outer space. And inner space has to bounce out the outer space or the outer space will wreck us. I mean, imagine if they accidentally destroyed the moon and it crashed into the earth. What would that do? I mean, that's crazy. And, and we're, we're actually at a place where we could tamper with the solar system. And I, I agree with Manly Hall that no matter what happens, even if the planet Earth were to leave its orbit and go crazy in chaos in outer space, that the human beings would find a way to reincarnate somewhere. It might, it might take a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to say that, that we'll talk about this again about more on the Aquarius, but we're entering into the world self, the consciousness soul age at a much more larger, a larger stop, you know. And this February, June, and December of 2021 of the Saturn square Uranus that takes place every 43, 47 years is kind of like a midlife crisis for sure. And it's like you're, everybody feels like their their life's half over or something, or that you're heading for the end, and and you're trying to get a second wind, or you're dying or something. And so February, June, and December is when that last Saturn Uranus squares, and that's that struggle <clears throat> for uh, new currency and what's what is the news and what is structure and security and what is freedom and what is what is. Um, you know, what? what is healing? The Chiron is between the Saturn and Uranus. So what is it that can heal uh, the authoritarianism versus rash French revolutionary stuff where people are just attacking everybody all the time? And this, how do we step up to the consciousness so that we can feel what everybody feels in the world so that we can do something about it in an intelligent heart way rather than just the intellectual quick fix? The death of nature, um, you know, when these, since 1802, the Jupiter Saturn was in Earth signs in 1842. And I mean, that was the death of nature and the death of the buffalo and the birth of the Industrial Revolution and machines and this this terrible materialistic side. So, so now we're going into a really, from the Earth materialism and the over-physicality of the Iron Age, we're going into the Aquarian Age and the Aquarian Age may not be here for a few hundred years, or did it really happen like in the esoteric character of the Gospels? Blavatsky says it happened at the end of the 1800s. And uh, Steiner says that too, I think. And so does Yogananda. So did it happen on the etheric or astral plane at the end of the 1800s? It could have. 1800, late 1800s, it, you had that that um, Neptune-Pluto as conjunction in Gemini, early Gemini. And the Age of Information began and discovery of electricity, which is uh, disintegrating astral bodies of those who passed on into the weather to prepare the earth for the next 
lifetime when they reincarnate. And we've kind of tortured these this astral energy into electricity, and we need to find a new kind of energy rather than fossilized fuel and a new kind of energy rather than electricity. And I think we're about to rediscover uh, magnetism, and that could be have a lot to do with the Neptune aspects on the United States chart is, you know, a new energy created by creativity and water and hydrogen and magnetism and, and other things. So we, and, but let's keep going because I'm going to run out of time here. And I just want to give you, I'm trying to give you a bunch of ideas so that you can like go research it yourself and you can go to the Mayflower Bookshop and buy Psyche and Cosmos. You can tune in to Stock Market Astrology with Ray Merriman, a friend of mine, and, um, you can tune in to um, Dane Ruder, a teacher of mine who used to come and hang out at my house a little bit. Uh, Dane Ruder, who everybody studied with. Sass Supporters studied him. Robert Hand. All the good astrologers, pretty much everybody, studied Dane Ruder at some point. And then Robert Hand, right? And then a royal, and these people all followed. Uh, Robert Thibodeau followed. So, uh, by the way, uh, just to throw it into you, I'm... Uh, as as my friend Ray pointed out, and many others, uh, the Wall Street Journal covered the first Trump election that Mrs. Clinton would win, and I was the only notable astrologer that predicted Trump would win, and then he would lose the next election. And I'm going to get into it in another talk, but I want to say that Mr. Biden, President Biden, has really tough aspects. That was also pointed out after I had a nice talk with Ray, and he mentioned my prediction that um, Biden has difficult aspects, and he gave his own opinion about it too in his newsletter. And um, also, Mr. Trump and the Florida governor, DeSantis, is that his name? They have a lot of good aspects come 2024. So what's going to happen? Are Republicans going to win? And we'll talk about that again later. Again, we're just talking about astrology. We're not talking about what we like or dislike. We're talking about trying to make predictions with astrology. And of course, in astrology, you can't really predict because every astrological aspect has a higher and lower aspect to it, a higher and lower octave. And I think a lot of astrologers have picked up on this from my book, Astrological Aspects of the Art. They've really picked up on this. Uh, there's, there's some guy put out a book. Uh, I know the guy, Higher Octaves of Astrology. I mean, and I even heard Robert Hand is going to try to do higher, lower octaves of course, this idea I picked up from the Hermetics and from the Theosophical Astrology, Blavatsky and Steiner. I mean, it's, it's there in Neoplatonism too. So, but but you, have to, you have to find it. And so, so are we going into the Jupiter-Saturn air signs for we're all gonna, the Roboton consciousness in the head computer and a lot of this illnesses and craziness are coupled around like increased activity in outer space and computers and telephones and all that stuff that we've got to have some kind of wisdom on it before we go into some kind of further difficulties that remind us of the past uh, in some novel new way. So you have uh, 1405, Jupiter-Saturn in Aquarius, and that's the tarot and consciousness soul and the Rosicrucian movement is taking off totally in, in, and it was in April of 1345 that, the, you know, Rosicrucians, Parsifal, Cathedrals, this is like the Jupiter-Saturn in Aquarius, 1345, 1286, 1226. I mean, so when people say that the last Jupiter-Saturn in Aquarius was 1405, that was the last one of a series that took place in 1226, 1286, 1345. This is the Grail, the Rosicrucians, the peak out of the Templars, the... King, the Arthurian mysteries going into the Parsifal mysteries of the human conscience and uh, sentient soul identifying with the Buddhic principle of universal love and Buddhism. And a lot of activity was going on with Tibetan Buddhism at that time too. We don't want to underestimate that. There's a lot to go. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that more later. Um, and also the 500-600s when Jupiter-Saturn was... Um, making certain aspects that triggered the King Arthurian mysteries. And even um, the uh, January of uh, 304 B.C. and 245 B.C., pre-Alexander the Great, kind of a setup. So, okay, so did I talk about everything I wanted to talk about? No, I didn't. I wanted to talk about... Um, 
the idea of um, Jupiter Uranus conjunct in spring of 24. We can look forward to that. And Jupiter square Saturn 2025 to see how we did the time we're in now. Um, I want to mention too that this August, this full moon in August, as we get to August 22nd and the last half of August, uh, the dark moon Lilith is going to reach the uh, earlier degrees of Gemini and uh, will conjunct the North Node. So this is a very wild woman month where new woman leaders could arise in the political scene around the world. Notable people that will survive the future. And um, it's a very sensuous time for the arts and music and friendships and love. You can be sensuous with stars, you know. Super sensuality isn't, isn't necessarily sex. You know, it's like it can be like the, the, the eros, which spells rose. The true Rosicrucian was trying to bring the spiritual and the material together, heaven and earth, together with mindfulness and dharma and spiritual ethics and values and conscious and community spirit. Um, in the the Saturn in Aquarius is hitting a midpoint of Jupiter Pluto in August into September. And this can be either an authoritative grounding or it's the wisdom that came through time that brings peace of mind to the this death and rebirth of the social identity that's been taking place. And so either people are going getting depressed and uh, uh, not able to purify their astral body of of uh, going to extremes of everything or nothing. and um, But it, we might have a little more sanity. Thank God we have a little more friendship and love in this August period. So look for that Jupiter to rise in the east and Jupiter to set before the moon in the evening, this week and next. See if you can spot it. And... Um, do I have anything else to say to you? I'm looking at my notes here. I have too many notes. I have lots of things about history to say. I've talked about that. We talked about, did we talk about Lilith uh, is between a midpoint between the Mars ascending sign and Neptune. So there's a lot of confusion, uh, perhaps. Once, I think that what that means when it's on the midheaven is that everybody's looking for a career and calling and a communication with a higher self that's sensuous, includes the feelings. And it's just not just intellect. And it's not just feelings without intellect. We're looking for a head and heart relationship, which I go really into Blavatsky and Steiner's voice, The Voice of the Silence by Blavatsky and The Foundation Stone by Steiner in other talks, the two, the two hands of God, really, you know. And... Um, I talk about theosophy and anthroposophy. I think the anthroposophy was able to bring Wegman back in, who was a great friend of Rudolf Steiner's near the end of his life. And the Theosophical Society, at the end of Blavatsky's life, was torn apart with a lot of arguments, very similar to the Anthroposophical Society. And Rudolf Steiner and Blavatsky, I think it would be a great healing if people could see the ideas that Steiner elaborated on or what was original that Steiner did, and where, where he got some great ideas from Blavatsky. And Blavatsky has some great ideas that nobody else has been able to drive home yet and, um, and ride enough. It could help the world. So everything could help the world if we have, like just like the astrological aspects, every religion, philosophy, metaphysics, every science, they all have a good side, you know, and they all have a bad side, it seems. So it's up to us to purify, illuminate, and find higher connection so that we can be co-creative with the whole of our life and the future evolution of the earth. So did I talk about everything? We talked about um, Neptune. These Neptune aspects are overindulgence and wanting to melt in a dream and, and over-idealize, but it's also the arts and music in some cr incredibly wild, crazy good way. And ideal love, very ideal love. Maybe too idealistic, so it crashes. 
versus to not able to reach the ideal. And Uranus is change and rearranging the game and being estranged, going through changes, making changes and being put through them, or being estranged or upset versus resetting inner teachings and learnings and purpose, shock one into growth or knock one out. Um, it's, it's looking for right acknowledgement. And Saturn is trying to just, justify or rationalize or solidify or realize or accept or forgive, indiv individuate, individe, divided within or individuate, individ, individ, in the id is in, inuate. So the id you ate, I'm making play on words. Saturn individualizes and wants to be alone, happiness when alone. Uranus wants change. So there we have it. Jupiter wants to go along with the group individuality, external social identity for what looks good sometimes, but wants peace and common wealth and a wisdom that belongs to all of us should be taken care of. Things that belong to all of us should be taken care of by all of us and we should find the wisdom in nature rather than trying to just profiteer off it So and each other, profiteer off each other. So the, these are some of the problems. These are some of the... Um, the cause for a new world, a reimagined, re-inspired world. And again, the Jupiter trying the United States, Venus, as we go into 2022, working with others, more fortunate occurrences for individuals and groups and ideals become practical and beneficial results. And, you know, the Saturn and Aquarius can be big plans without proper foundation, but the Jupiter Saturn is a love for working with people and finding the right people to work with rather than working with people you don't like. Um, so so the, the, this Jupiter retrograde um, went from Pisces, the, the, this kind of love, this kind of idealistic, over-idealistic love and maybe being too lax and uh, lazy and... Uh, belittling of others. And it goes back to Aquarius for this creative, unique thinking and spontaneous, creative arising and new friends and new business, new ideas, new social life. And this is kind of exciting. And it's exciting that the Jupiter-Saturn uh, in Aquarius has this relationship to the cathedral builders and the Templars and the Grail. It really, really does. Don't believe people that, don't believe in people that over-materialize the Grail as these objects. The grail is our heart. It's the spirit of the world as a sword of truth that enters into our heart. It's the spirit, the sword of the spirit of the sun that's a spark. That sword is a point in our heart as a spark of the sun. And it's divine love. It's our, our divine self wanting to discover the divine in other people. And that's the truth. And that's what we should be looking for with all this Aquarius. <clears throat> the, the cosmic Buddha has to speak from the heart and the head, but also the throat chakra and the spirit will, the, the divine will. Thy will be done, not my will, uh, as they say in Hermetics and Christianity. So <clears throat> we're coming back from this <clears throat> Pluto in, a, in Capricorn, which is an untiring climb to the top a feeling of being burdened by the mountain of work before you and behind you. And we're going into Aquarius where <clears throat> it's the Aquarius, Aquarius is like friendship and lovers and children and what we inherit from our spiritual gifts as well as the outer things and what is earth and grounding. And Jupiter Saturn is trying to rediscover that and Pluto going into Aquarius is a death and rebirth like a whole new way of birthing. In the future, we'll, we'll birth out of our creativity, out of our of our, our, our voice. Like they already know that, like you have a baby in the womb of the mother, right? And all the sounds of whoever's talking helped form that baby's face and features. There's been a lot of research on that. I mean, Rudolf Steiner goes into the 12 signs of Zodiac and where the planets are and how that does it too. And that could very well influence who's talking. <laughs> but... I, uh, what we put ourselves around with sound 
and breath and vibrations and music gives us our inner form that externalizes into the outer form. So I should stop here. <clears throat> There's more to say. This is Robert of Mayflower Bookshop in Berkeley, Michigan. My phone number is 248-547-8227. I'm at mayflowerbookshop.com, our website. I'm on YouTube with songs. I have a band, Detroit Jewels. I have another little group, just two of us, a piano player and me. Um, and um, Roy Honeybee and the Wild Oak. That name might change, but that's what I'm working with right now. <clears throat> My piano player said, who's Roy? I said, well, we could take turns, you know. <laughs> it's just like kind of, it's art. Everything's art. And I think uh, it should be a spiritual science, too. So this is Robert of Mayflower Bookshop. Hoping you have a really good time on the full moon and that you're able to carry it right through August and you're able to carry it um, like, I think it was like, um, it was Da Vinci, some people say. Francis Bacon said it too. Truth alone is the daughter of time, not authority. Leonardo da Vinci, the notebook. Truth is the daughter of time. Art is a servant of nature. Nature is the daughter of time. I thought I got that from Steiner and Blavatsky, but CRC said at the Night of the Golden Stone, art is the servant of nature. There's inner nature, too. Nature is the daughter of time. Well, Sophia is the wisdom of God. We have, we have God, but we don't have the wisdom of God. And the divine feminine is the stillness and the listening heart. So I hope you enjoy this full moon. I hope it carries you into the new moon on September 5th, where Venus will trine Jupiter and Mars trines Pluto. Another really great sign for a great month in September. There's some rough aspects, but it's going to be another month of greatness. The full moon on the 20th of September, that full moon, there's Mercury trine Jupiter. It happens at 28 Pisces. So Virgo Pisces, the mutable signs are going to be triggered then. And then we go into Libra Aries, new and full moon in October. And um, I think it's going to be, it's going to get better, but especially as we get into next year. And the water signs are going to be really happy then because Jupiter is going to go forward. The water and air signs are going to be benefited in the next couple of years. Okay, this is Robert of Mayflower Bookshop. Bless your heart. Uh, ask me your questions and I'll try to get to it. And this is a little bit of astrology for me. Really, you should get your own chart. You, I sell astrology programs for your computer at Mayflower Bookshop. I sell Solar Fire. Take that. That's really great. You can go into business. See ya.